Uh, one of the things we need to do as leaders, I think, is help maintain unity, the peace among the brethren. And one of the ways we do that is honor. It's so important that we have a culture of honor because that's what God wants us to do. First of all, we honor the Lord Jesus Christ. We give Him glory for all that He's doing. But when somebody on your team does something that's good, Encourage them. Tell them good job. And, and, and a, a good word spoken in due season is like apples of gold in settings of silver. The Bible says our words can build up, our words can destroy. It said there's those that speak and they're speaking. It's like the slashing of a sword. We don't want to be like that with leaders. We need to have patience. And one of the things we need to do is look how patient God is with us. And we've got to be patient with those that are we're working with. Sometimes, and listen, I've been in this for 50 years, sometimes it's easier to do it yourself than to train somebody else to do it for you. But that's not the plan of God. God wants us to mentor one another, encourage one another, uh, uh, bring people alongside of us. Like Paul had a Timothy. You, all of us need a Timothy. We need a young champion we're training and bringing up in the things of God. And we've got to really work at having unity. I mean, striving to keep the unity of, uh, of, of, the, of the oneness and peace. Peace is so important. And the devil knows that he can divide the house. The house can't stand. A house divided can't stand. And one of the one of the key ministries of leaders is to maintain a culture of honor and peace. And one of the ways to do it is to be swift to forgive. And if somebody does something that's wrong, instead of just uh, can correct them, show them show them uh, a better way to do it. But don't don't just badger them with that. Encourage them, even if they mess up really really bad. Remember the prodigal son? Oh man, he'd made some bad decisions, and he said, "I'm no more worthy." See, a lot of people in church. He's that's what they feel. They feel like there's no, they're no more worthy. They've got to get back to the, the Father's house to find the Father's heart. And if you're going to be a leader, if you're going to be an effective leader and keep peace, you've got to have the Father's heart towards those that have fallen and those that have made some bad choices. Remember the Father ran and fell on his neck? And you and I need to have a forgiving heart. And you say, well, you don't know, Bobby, what they did to me. Listen, that's true. But whatever they did to us cannot be what we did to Jesus. And the book of Ephesians says, be kind tenderhearted one to another, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven us. Beloved, you and I do not have the privilege of holding a grudge. I'll tell you, if you hold a grudge, believe me now, the only one that hurts is you. Bitterness will consume you like a cancer. And what you say, well, Bobby, I'm going, I'm going to forgive them, but I'm not going to forget about it. Nope, that's, that's, that's superficial. You've got to ask God to give you a heart to extract any bitterness. And don't let any, don't listen, you can find something good about the worst person. Isn't that something you really can? So God bless you. And I want, I want you to know this. As a leader, we're constantly learning. And listen. I have never yet, I've been doing this 50 years, I've never met anybody in their right mind that said, I've got all of God I need. The more we get, the more we realize how, how small our concept is of God. He's bigger than we could imagine. And I want us to instill in our people a divine expectation. Instead of going, well, this is it. No, listen, we ain't seen nothing yet. God is going to shock us. He, here, here, here's what you got to do. It's Habakkuk 1 5. It says, Look, look, search among the nations. I will work a work in your day. It'll be so marvelous, so magnificent, you barely can believe it. Listen, one translation says, God's about to blow our mind. I am so tired of people getting so smug, saying, Well, I know all that God's going to do. No. Well, listen, He's going to shock us, stun us, surprise us. And so that's part of a leader. We've got to build that into our people. Instead of just saying, well, it's mundane. We'll come to church. We'll have a, a pretty good idea of what won't happen. And then we'll greet some people and go home. No, we need to come to church with our eyes wide open. You know, oh, God, what are you going to do today? I'll tell you what he's going to do today. He's going to do anything he wants to do. He's God. And he's going to fill this whole earth with the knowledge of his son. So that's, aren't you glad we got a part of leading? that we can instill that into our people. And we've got to always leave our people with the best is yet to come. Don't, you can't go forward looking in the rearview mirror. You know what I mean? You'll run the ditch. Look, we've got a bright future. Okay, God bless you. Stay tuned now because we're going to keep on talking about leadership. We're going to talk about it till it, it lights something inside of you. And you realize, God has confidence in me. He's the one who called me. I didn't call myself. Isn't that amazing? God created things for us to do before he created us. Wow. It's such an honor to be in the body of Christ and, and be the body of Christ. Isn't that amazing? Well, that's amazing. The Bible said, what? Don't you know your body's a temple? 
you're, you're a God carrier. I'll tell you what you are. You're a history maker. You're a world changer, whether you believe it or not. And God's going to shake us out of this stupor of, I can't do it, till I can do all things through Christ who infuses me with power. He'd never call us to a task without a touch. He'd never give us an assignment without an anointing. So leaders need to tune into God and find out what He's doing, find it out, and then do what He's doing. That's what Jesus did. He said, I only do what I see my father doing. I'll only say what I hear my father saying. We need that kind of synchronization, don't we?